everyone and welcome back to Utility Sports. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about the Boston Celtics, their head coaching vacancy because I think they're one of the more interesting teams to talk about this offseason. They're at a real crossroads with this franchise I feel. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, obviously the future of this roster. They've got some decisions to make with Kemba Walker. Of course, a new head coach coming in because of Brad Stevens moving to president of basketball operations to replace Danny Ainge and the first thing he has to do is find the head coach that is going to secede him there in Boston. But before we jump into talking in this video, I wanna urge you guys to hit that subscribe button. We just hit 3000 subscribers, so absolutely awesome that you guys have killed it so much with the support. Also, leave a thumbs up on today's video. It lets us know here at Utility Sports that you're enjoying the content we've been posting daily. You don't wanna miss out on any of it. Subscribe, turn on that notification bell too, so you don't miss out on any premium utility sports coverage. And now let's jump into the Boston Celtics because there's a real chance here that I think that this team could make history with this signing. There's a few different pieces I would like to talk about at this point. Let's first stop with Brad Stevens. Of course, got a little burnt out is what the reports are saying about coaching, especially after the bubble last season. Didn't advance in the playoffs this year and the Celtics decided to make the move. Danny Ainge resigns, steps down from his position as president of basketball operations, and Brad Stevens gets an instant promotion. And this makes a lot of sense because he was a hot name throughout all of college basketball for the way he built up Butler. A lot of other college programs wanted to steal him back from the Boston Celtics. So the Celtics, of course, give him a promotion, probably a sizable pay raise, uh, and really full control over this team and this organization from a basketball standpoint and that's going to be enough to hold him there in Boston for a long time he's obviously a very very smart man when it comes to basketball so it's good that they're going to be able to keep him in a prominent role in that organization but now he has to find the next head coach of the franchise and there is a list already of, of people he's interviewed or is expected to interview for sure Jerome Allen Scott Morrison Jay Larinaga being two, three of the four assistants, Joe Mazzula being the final one from the Celtics' own coaching staff. Of course, that's big. They have a leg up already in this process because they've worked so closely with Brad Stevens. He knows their body of work quite a bit better because they've been with him, traveling with the team, doing all that. And I think one guy that really sticks out from those four is Jay Laranaga. I think he's been a key, key part of development there for the Boston Celtics. They've done such a good job developing young talent. Jalen Brown's developed so much since coming into the league. Jason Tatum, of course, played very well his rookie year, but has still taken massive strides getting better and better. Marcus Smart really has developed since coming into the NBA from Oklahoma State. And I think Jay Laranaga deserves a lot of the credit. I know Celtics fans, you probably look at him as the lead development guy there in Boston. So I think it would make some sense for him to possibly be the next head coach of the Boston Celtics, reward him for his development of some of the young guys on the team and let him see them through their career as the next head coach of the Boston Celtics. Nets assistant Ime Adoka, uh, of course, a big name there as well. Clippers assistant Chauncey Billups, the biggest name on this list more than likely. I think that he's an interesting name to watch, was calling games just over a year ago, moved to the assistant role with the Los Angeles Clippers, and now has a shot to become a head coach. He's an interesting name. Darvin Ham, we know what he is. Charles Lee uh, probably will not get this job. Jamal Mosley of the Mavericks assistant. Uh, very interesting here because the Mavericks have produced a ton of coaches over time. Kenny Atkinson came from Rick Carlisle's staff from a few years ago. Of course, Steven Silas now with the Houston Rockets. Jamal Mosley would be just the latest of a long tree of success coming from Rick Carlisle's coaching staff over there in Dallas. And of course, Rick Carlisle is the head of the Coaches Association. So he has a pretty prominent role in helping people find positions uh, as head coaches or big time assistant coaches somewhere else. Jamal Mosley definitely getting benefited by that and Rick Carlisle. But the key here, I think, is the other rumored candidates and targets. There's a few names on here I want to touch on. Let's start with Mike D'Antoni. I think that's an easy get that one out of the way. He will not be the next head coach of the Boston Celtics. I would be surprised if Brad Stevens, someone who's such an X's and O's guru, would be impressed by a Mike D'Antoni interview. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I don't think Mike D'Antoni's that good of a head coach. I think he empowers his players to take tough shots and make tough shots and, he's, and really puts a lot of confidence into his players. But from an X's and O's standpoint, he has never elevated one of his teams. The Phoenix Suns with Nash and Stoudemire, he never elevated that team. You're looking also at 
the Rockets with James Harden over the course of seven years, did he elevate James Harden or did he just let James Harden do what James Harden does best? You know, as a coach, I could call high ISO for James Harden as well. Mike D'Antoni really didn't do a lot. Uh, and to be honest, most of his defensive success came with some help from his assistant coaches there in Houston. So I just don't think Mike D'Antoni's the right coach for this job. Jason Kidd, a name who pulled himself out of the Portland Trailblazers head coaching search. I think he's an interesting fit into Boston. I think he's got some of the similar ideologies as Brad Stevens. I think he's more of a true X's and O's guy. But in his short stops as head coaches elsewhere, both Milwaukee and Brooklyn did not find a ton of success. So it'll be interesting to see if that does hinder him during a head coaching search here with the Boston Celtics. Lloyd Pierce, I think, would be a terrible hire. Uh, we saw how much better the Atlanta Hawks were without him. I just don't think Lloyd Pierce really fits this job at this point. I think he's going to have to spend more time as an assistant somewhere before he gets another shot to be a head coach in the NBA. I mean, he just did not win games. Sam Cassell, a very interesting name as well. Spent a lot of time in Boston during his career. I think that would make a lot of sense to have a reunion there. He's currently acting as the Sixers assistant. And this guy knows basketball. I think he's one of the smarter candidates on this list. But ultimately, I don't necessarily know if I see Boston going with him. I think Chauncey Billups probably has a leg up on him. I think Ime Odoka has a leg up. Jay Laranega as well. I think I'll have a leg up on Sam Cassell. But one person I have not talked about yet, which you probably have noticed, is Duke's women, Duke women's coach, Carol Lawson. And I think that this does make a lot of sense. Boston is generally a more progressive franchise. They're usually quicker to act than others. They've been very progressive throughout this whole process. Moving Brad Stevens to president of basketball operations before the whole thing melted down. One of my friends who's a Celtics fan talked a lot about this with me saying, you know, if things weren't going to work, he's happy we made that move now and tried to figure it out before you're past your championship window because you're about to move into your championship window with Jason Tatum about to enter his prime. This Celtics team is very, very good, and you're looking for ways to elevate it. And I think one progressive way could be Carol Lawson. She's found a lot of success at Duke as the woman, women's coach there. And I think the first, w, first women's NBA coach could be coming with Carol Lawson. I think it does make a lot of sense with the Boston Celtics. Now, one question I have is how does she maintain a locker room full, filled with 25 plus year old men? I feel like that might be a little bit harder but at the same time, we've seen Becky Hammond have a lot of success in her time with the San Antonio Spurs, even acting as head coach for a game when Greg Popovich was ejected, I believe. And I think Carol Lawson would find a lot of success. She's smart. She understands the game of basketball. Obviously, has been around it her whole life. And I think if Brad Stevens really wants to make a progressive move and try something that hasn't been done before, Carol Lawson is a phenomenal, phenomenal option for that. I don't want to hear any of the Women should be in the kitchen. Things on this video. If you have, if you post anything like that, you're going to be removed from commenting on the channel. So please, no disrespect there. Carol Lawson, she's going to be a phenomenal coach at some point in the NBA. My question is, will it be with the Boston Celtics right now? Let me know in the comments below. Out of this list of candidates, who do you think Boston will end up hiring to be their head coach? Or is there someone not even on this list that you think would be very, very interesting? This website... Uh, is hoopsrumors.com. They do a pretty good job putting together a whole list. Uh, so check them out as well. Thanks for the website. Uh, and we'll catch you guys in the next video. Hopefully you did enjoy.